The Imperial Guard arrived on Cronus in pursuit of the Eldar Farseer Taldir. General Lucas Alexander found more than his prey there, however. He found his destiny. General Alexander claimed the abandoned city of Ironworks Bay as a base of operations and found there the massive Hellstorm cannon of an Imperator War Titan. Tech priests had brought this fearsome relic to Cronus millennia ago. Soon after, it was cut from a heretical war machine during the Horus Heresy. When the General reported his discovery, the Imperial Guard's High Command issued him new orders. He would secure the Titan's gun, along with any other relics of the Tech Priests, and would then return Cronus to the Imperium of Man, ordering him to drive out the aliens and heretics besetting this world. Segmentum Command named Alexander Governor Militant and created the 1st Cronus Regiment from his ground forces. The new governor quickly renamed the city itself Victory Bay, making it his new planetary capital, while his men adopted the sobriquet of Liberators for the regiment. When the Blood Raven Space Marines began the purge of Cronus, the governor militant refused to retreat. His orders were clear, regardless of the demands of the Space Marines. The Guard would fight the Blood Ravens along with all the other invaders. We've been overrun!
terrifying battle through the underground labyrinth of the Necron Catacombs cost the Liberators dearly. The implacable foe claimed scores upon scores of lives, notably wiping out 4th Company's 2nd and 5th Platoons. But when the smoke cleared from the great detonation which collapsed the catacombs, a great cheer arose from the survivors. In several places, the ancient structures of the Necron tomb world emerged from the desert. Father Martel, confessor to the governor and the de facto archdeacon of Cronus, ultimately condemned these as heretical blights which continued to corrupt all those who spent time near them. Governor Militant Alexander took his words to heart and had his men use further bombs to reduce all ruins to rubble or bury them under tons of sand. Ready. Yes, Arnel. The Earthcast is completing construction of the Montcar Command Post. Our armored units are ready to deliver the killing blow. And our crude allies? Also ready, Arnel. The Karyun Command Post in the city's crude quarter is prepared, and the Shapers have readied the finest of their warriors. are taking position across the city, ready to strike where the enemy is weak. Fought. The Imperial victory over the Tau forces in Asharis was definitely the most celebrated of the Liberation Campaign. In the death of the ethereal Shiores and the retreat of his forces, 
Governor Militant Alexander saw the completion of his dream of once and for all stripping Cronus from the Tau Empire. A military parade through the streets of Asharis marked the victory, along with repeated scenes of sanctioned destruction of the signs of alien occupation. The Regimental Commissariat also established offices in Asharis and other liberated cities where citizens could provide information on those who had aided the alien occupiers. The trials of accused collaborators were rapid and deadly, the Emperor's justice having no mercy for traitors to the human race. enemy is at our doorstep and thinks he can push us off this world. He is already gloating. He can taste his victory. But what he fails to see is that we will make this his last meal. The chief librarian has ordered the purge of this world to protect our chapter's secrets. Are we to retreat with our duty unfulfilled? Are we to let a black mark stain the banner of the Blood Ravens? I say that we will not. I say our enemies will regret the day they ever decided to face us in battle. Our battle barge orbits overhead and will rain the Emperor's holy fury upon our opponents. More of our brothers will come to join the fight. But as ever, our enemy outnumbers us. Each of you must be an army in your own right. Veterans of the First Company, the finest of the entire chapter, stand with us. Let their valor guide your fire into the enemy's heart. Remember that we are Blood Ravens, brothers. We have all sworn to protect fonts of hidden knowledge. Each one of us must fall before handing this word to the enemy. The Emperor is with us. The Unknown Primarch is with us. They have come for our blood, but they will drown in their own. No! We cannot fail. The gene seed must be preserved. Get Captain Fuel to the Thunderhawk. Understood. Join them, brother apothecary. We will cover your escape. And you? We cannot allow the enemy to claim our relics. This area must be cleansed with orbital fire. The chapter will honor you, brother. There is no honor to be had in defeat. But someone must deliver the targeting beacon. Orbital control. Lock onto this beacon and fire. Full power. Governor Militant Alexander and the Blood Raven Captain Thule could only end in blood. Both had explicit orders and both were convinced they acted with the Emperor's blessing. Only when the Liberators had driven into North Vandia and leveled the Space Marines Castellum Incorruptus did the Blood Ravens cease their purge of the planet and withdraw. Although orbital salvos from the Blood Raven's battle barge leveled much of the remains of the base, Governor Alexander directed his men to conduct a careful search for any records the Space Marines might have left behind. Their search was not in vain, and Alexander uncovered records linking the chapter to past visits to the planet as well as disturbing contradictions in the chapter's history. It seems likely that these discoveries led directly to the Inquisition's probe of the chapter soon thereafter. Prepared. A 
Excellent. Exocracanus, take your warp spiders to their positions and then return to the Aspect Shrine. We are on our way. You have doubts, Harlequin? I trust in your vision, tall dear of Othway, but to stand surrounded by primitives makes me uneasy. I understand your distaste, but Eldar rely on speed and stealth. We are not made for entrenched positions. The orcs, however, make for excellent tools. They will keep the supply roads closed and our true enemies weak. And if these attackers defeat the orcs? I do not doubt they will overcome our cat's paws, but it will cost them. And in their weakened state, they will face the Wailing Doom itself. The Seer Council has named the Young King. Exarch Rakanis of the Warp Spider Shrine shall sacrifice himself to awaken our most powerful warrior, the Avatar of Cain. None shall escape my wrath. Close to us now. We are trapped on this world. The Avatar of Cain has fallen. Go, all of you. Find what refuge you can in the wilderness of this world. Escape is still possible, Farseer. I do not deserve that title, Harlequin. My vision has failed us all. My fate is here, and I shall not flee from it. or deceit could forestall the Emperor's justice when the Liberators finally tracked Farseer Taldir to the frozen train of Tyria. With the Witch's webgate sealed and her forces crushed, Governor Militant Alexander soon held the Xeno Farseer in his hands. Drugged and imprisoned, she would ultimately be handed over to the Inquisition. Taldir's capture meant Governor Alexander's original mission was at an end. However, in a rousing speech before the troops in Tyria, and broadcast across the planet, Alexander reminded his soldiers of their duty to return Cronus to Imperial control. Father Martel, the Governor's own confessor, blessed this mandate in the name of the immortal god emperor and the regimental commissars called it the duty of all loyal guardsmen to push on to total victory Sneak about without me boys seeing ya! You think you can come for me, Ed? 
Orcs is never beaten in battle. Slaughter the grot. The rest of them are coming and we got to be ready. Tell the boys there's some killing to do. I made them big banners to remind the clans that they better keep their boys in line. I don't want no squigheads looking to fight me when the enemy's right here. Gorguts is the war boss. Got it, you muck suckers? This here voicey box let him talk to you. So open your ears. Listen up, your grots and squigs. Day's coming for us like we some kind of human kits. But we ain't. We's the orcs, and this here is gonna be one great fight. So get your choppers and your shooters ready, boys, cause there's some killing to do. Head crushers, you ready? <laughs> Stompers, you squiggers and sucks ready! Burner boys, you wanna fight? Rocket Rangers, you in it or what? And what about you? Get all the good fighting done. That's right. We gonna cross them all. This here is a right and proper. he threw against the Liberators, Warlord Gorguts could not stand against the might of the Imperial Guard. The Orc Chieftain's escape would later put a blemish on the victory in the Green Coast. But in the immediate aftermath, most assumed he had died in the cataclysmic explosion that destroyed his encampment. Governor Militant Alexander entrusted the job of cleaning up the now divided Orcs to Captain Gregor Vash's second company. Vash broke his forces up into individual hunter squads, offering rewards and glory to those units that confirmed the most kills. The Ogrins under his command took this contest to heart and collected massive piles of orcish skulls for themselves. The company commissar eventually forbade this practice as incompatible with the Imperial Creed. He spent some weeks in the Medicaid Temple after informing the Ogryn warriors of his decision. With the 37 keys of Zinch, we open the way for our brothers. With the thousand whispers of Slanesh, we call to them. With the twelve plagues of Nurgle, we fell their enemies. And with the might 
mighty axe of corn. We cut open the world for them. Yes. Come forth to bear the word of chaos. Hear my warnings, unbelievers. Carry to your minds by the power of the Prince of Excess himself. We have raised altars in this land so that we may sacrifice you to our gods. Veterans of ten millennia of unholy war wait to grind you beneath the treads of their mighty boots. The Chosen of Corn hunger to add you to their bloody tally. The Blood God himself has marked this land and will claim your skulls for his throne. There is no hope in opposing the inevitable. Put down your arms, unbelievers, and bow before the forces of chaos undivided. See the faith of my crusaders. They will cleanse you of your disbelief. It is a poor shepherd who blames his flock apostle. This failure is yours and yours alone. No, I will not go to the Basilica of Torments again. Fear not, apostle. The Basilica is reserved for those who may redeem themselves. No. No! You will have no such chance. The Liberator's Third Company provided the bulk of Governor Militant Alexander's troops during the final assault on the Word Bearer's Warp Gate. This choice was astute as 3rd Company had been drawn from the Cadian 15th Regiment and were veterans of several hard battles against Chaos forces on their home world. The men of 3rd Company did their duty admirably, despite having to fight across warp-blasted terrain and face countless twisted horrors. In the wake of the bloody battle, the Company came to be known as the Demon Killers. But scores of men left their lives on that corrupted soil, and many more were maimed and wounded. The toll of the battle was higher still among the sanctioned psychers supporting the troops. The presence of so much unbridled warp energy drove many to madness or to lose control over their strange abilities. The regimental commissariat oversaw the execution of those lost to the enemy. With the last alien bastion broken, Governor Militant Alexander stood as the uncontested ruler of Cronus and a hero to his men. Even faced with the opposition of the Blood Ravens, the governor carried out his orders and received his rewards. Indeed, Sigmentum Command ordered the Liberators to remain on Cronus during a pacification period and then to ship out to the next conflict zone. Governor Alexander would remain behind to rule in the God Emperor's name. Large numbers of tech priests arrived on Cronus to oversee a massive campaign of public works, bringing with them the huge resources needed. In return, they gained permission to resume study of the Hellstorm Cannon in Victory Bay, hoping to return it to the Emperor's service. As for the Liberators, Governor Alexander promoted Captain Vash to Colonel and placed him in command. With the regiment still loyal to him, a planet at his command, and the Tech Priests of Mars in his debt. Lucas Alexander had begun his rise as a power to be reckoned with in this sector of the galaxy.